Hey everyone, this is Mick from Brutalitopia here. We are here in Chicago. It's subterranean. I am here with Brett Campbell of Paul Bear. Uh, Brett, uh, first of all, thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview with us. Um, just tell us, I know you're at the last day or two of this uh, tour that you guys are on. Just tell us, you know, the goods, the bads of, uh, you know, you guys have been touring your butts off for the past couple months. So just kind of, you know, what it's all been like for you guys out there on the road. Uh, man, this this particular leg has been more goods than bads, luckily and uh, thankfully. Like, uh, we've had a really good time with Mortals and Souls to Fear. We've known uh, Mortals for a few years now, so it was really awesome to get to hit the road with them and we've been we got along really well with the souls to fear dudes they're all like great people you know so yeah we've had a really good time and uh you know shit gets exhausting every once in a while but we had like a few weeks off like three weeks off before this like thing so we got to like basically just like hibernate for a little while which is nice but yeah we've been practically since uh the record came out we've been just like keeping the road hot i was gonna say like at this point with like almost you know the tours being over at the end of the year are you guys just like kind of taking it all in or you're just like oh god thank thank god it's all over for now <laughs> uh it's a mixture of both like uh i'm i don't know i'm having a really really good time on this tour and you know it'll, it'll be nice to take a like you know like relieve a little kinetic energy i guess you always know, just feel like it was non-stop you know but that's not that's not bad like Going back, but just going back to Little Rock is the exact opposite of what we're doing right now. It's just like the, you know, the op. Yeah, it's like, yeah, very um, quiet. You know. Um, going on that note of uh, of Little Rock in Arkansas, like I maybe I'm I'm not aware of any other bands, but you know, Little Rock, Arkansas is not necessarily like what I think of as a hotbed for metal currently. Um, for Paul Bear was what was what was it like you know being in arkansas and having a metal band was it was it like a good community to kind of grow up in for that or was it just like you guys were kind of on your own making it uh it was absolutely the best metal community to come up in i think maybe anywhere and it's sad that like uh i don't know it it isn't more well known because uh and it isn't quite as uh i guess maybe vital as it once was but when I was actually, like, growing up, like, as a teenager and, like, starting to form my first bands that, well, you know, actually became bands and weren't just, like, some dudes trying to play some shit, like, uh, no, it was, like, the absolute best environment to come up in with, come up in because there was bands like Wake and Dead Bird, uh, this band called Shitfire, <laughs> weird name, but they yeah, are, like, they're, yeah, no, they're they're a huge influence on what we do, particularly on this album. Like, they're just like extremely heavy, catchy, and just like also just technically weird and like fearless sort of music. And that's just kind of the spirit that has always pervaded like Arkansas metal in general. Like, the body is from Little Rock. Like, you know, it's just a huge variety of bands that like are all pretty much just like united under the idea of being heavy but there's no real limitations to anything but you know there's most of them are sludgy or doomy or stuff like that so it was pretty it was pretty natural to form a heavy sludgy doomy band because that's what we've grown up with and that's kind of the environment that uh little rock kind of breeds that sort of thing in more ways than just music like the lifestyle, I guess. Were, were there, other, in addition to that, were there other um, bands that you guys, when Paul Bear was first formed, that you kind of agreed upon that's like, yeah, we kind of want to go for that doomier kind of sound like that, you know, more down-driven, kind of slower beat kind of thing? Were there, you know, mutual bands that you guys really listened to that were like, oh, yeah, we kind of want to sound like that to a degree? Sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, our influences are from all over the place, but, I mean especially forming the band and sort of what became the kind of bedrock of everything. I mean, uh, the early Well Heaven Wept material is absolutely, like, crucial. And uh, Solstice, the the Doom Solstice, the Death Metal Solstice is cool too, but... Uh, you know, just basically, and, you know, the local bands. We Our biggest influences truly are, like, local like bands and 
uh, maybe not directly, like as far as like we're trying to sound exactly like them, but it, the the general feeling and the like the like the sort of fearless fearless approach to making doom like what could be considered doom like it's you know like there's always been a like i said a certain fearlessness to it and we've tried to like just do whatever we feel is benefits the music rather than try to like have a certain box around ourselves and what we can and can't do depending on whether or not like nuclear war now or something is gonna fucking have a fucking backlash you know like that doesn't mean anything to us you know so yeah like little rock was a great place to discover and grow up in in heavy music and we've tried to keep that the same feeling we had when we were like 17 you know like and still try to like keep that in alive in what we're doing um, now, with obviously, you guys have been touring your butts off for your latest release, Foundations of Burden. Um, both that and your full length debut have been like, you know, major successes across, you know, the internet, metal community, what have you. Um, just kind of your comments on what perhaps with Foundations of Burden was different, either stylistically or what you guys did to in the process of making it that was, that was different this time around from uh, Sorrow and Extinction. Um, shit, do you want to go outside or something? Like, yeah, can we continue this interview outside? Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we're, so just so everyone knows, uh, Soul Sphere's about to go on and rock the fucking house, so we gotta, we gotta clear to a place that's a little more, uh, quiet. <laughs> so, part two coming up here with Brett Campbell. <laughs> Alright, well, like we, uh, promised, part two is continuing here on North Avenue on, a, a very, very cold Chicago night, but we're, we're doing it here for the interview, for the press. Um, so I believe we left off, Brett, with, um, you know, foundations of burden, um, perhaps either stylistic differences that you guys were going for as opposed to, uh, what you guys did on Sorrow Extinction or just kind of the general process that went behind it. Um, process-wise, you mean recording or writing-wise? Either or anything. Uh, writing-wise, like, um, we tried to, uh, really step up our, like, compositions in the sense of, like, having more dynamics, more, uh, textures, I guess. Um, you know, the first album, I wouldn't have it any other way, like, it was intended to be that way, but it's, it's kind of almost, like, a single block, like, the tempo's pretty close to the same through almost the whole album. And it kind of has this very singular, like, like vibe, I guess. And for this one, we wanted it to be more of, like, peaks and valleys. And, you know, sometimes, like, a little winding tributary going through there as well, you know. So, like, um, after becoming more comfortable, I guess, with writing in the, like, context of Paul Bearer and, like, becoming more... Uh, yeah, I don't know, just more comfortable with it. We decided to sort of push what we can do as a band and, you know, challenge ourselves a little bit. And, you know, so that way, by the time we get to our next next batch of material, we'll be moving even farther ahead, you know. Like, there's no... I've never really... I mean, some bands can pull it off, like Iron Maiden and ACDC, <laughs> Motorhead, whatever. Like, sort of just... They have their style, they have their sound, and then they just, like, nail it every time. And you don't want them to change it, you know? But, like, we're not, like, really capable of just sticking with one thing because it would just get really boring and we would lose interest and it wouldn't be honest, you know? So we just uh, basically just played what came naturally as the next batch of material, you know? It was... There was some forethought as like we wanted to have a little more energy or like proggy elements and stuff in this stuff in this next you know this latest batch of songs. But other than that, it's just whatever came naturally. Uh, we pick what we like the most out of our sketches of songs and then develop those like the ones that really everyone agrees like hits. Right. You know, like like we would just develop those. And that brings up another interesting point. Um, you guys obviously being, you know, kind of labeled as like a, a doom metal band or any kind of subgenre of that, um, kind of being more known for like, you know, a downdriven, really kind of, you know, depressing, kind of like really emotionally sucking, like kind of genre. Um, but 
the interesting thing about you guys is that, um, and a few other bands have been starting to do this, is kind of like incorporating, you know, like more soaring kind of guitar solos and, and clean vocals, the kind of adding like elements of like slightly more uplifting kind of things. Like, was that a conscious decision for you guys, or was it just kind of trying to do something a little different to kind of break the mold of what, you know, people think of as typical doom metal? I think, if anything, we have maybe, we have brought into maybe a slightly wider consciousness something that isn't really actually that new like people have been labeling us as like these you know like introducing this new element of met like melody into doom but like people have been doing that for so long just more on the underground like i mean like solstice like the early particularly the early wild heaven wept stuff like when they were you know unarguably a doom band and uh candle mass obviously and like just tons of melody throughout doom it's just like you know maybe not the bands that people who don't necessarily have a deep vested interest in doom would be aware of so people know the more like sludgy or stonery like electric wizard or whatever sleep you know nothing wrong with that and like you don't have to fucking be an encyclopedia you know but we our influences come from a lot of like melodic stuff and also a lot of like really i mean it doesn't come through as much as some of the other influence but like on the opposite end of the spectrum like funeral doom and the really like just fucking cavernous yeah. like harsh yeah. like depressive ultra depressive stuff like of all the subgenres of doom like i personally probably listen to more like funeral doom than anything else just i really like them. what are some of those more melodic influences that kind of come through for you guys that maybe people wouldn't necessarily expect well i mean like i said solstice while having wept etc stuff like that uh but i mean also like prog like prog rock like camel and uh gong and uh like you know uh just basically robin trower shit like that just like sort of melodic yeah just like amon duel 2 like shit like that like stuff that's really kind of particularly amon duel 2 is like really unclassifiable i mean it's like ostensibly kraut rock or whatever but it's like so is noi and that doesn't they don't sound anything alike you know but like uh yeah, just bands that like, don't really like the melody aspect really isn't like a uh, overt like thing that we're trying to like let's insert melody here or like there or whatever. It's just, it's just like natural. that's just how it yeah, that's how the songs come about. Like there's not there's a people would maybe be surprised at the the lack of on the very basic level, there's not a lot of thought that goes into the creation of the songs. The arrangements, on the other hand, are fucking ridiculous like we take forever to make sure everything's like right. there's well, the only songs that long yet, yeah 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 <laughs> we like longer. we clip the fuck out of our stuff like our songs could be 30 minutes long a piece but you know we try to like yet. yeah we try to get like maximum content in the shortest amount of time but also while like having like heavy like you know we're not going to be playing like last beats anytime sure, soon sure. but like is there uh, also kind of to wrap up the other part of the of your guys's kind of composition, like the lyrics kind of dealing more with, you know, kind of like death, kind of like embracing it, you know, like the the eventualities of it, kind sure. of like that. Is was that also kind of like something from the get go? That's like you know this is going to be kind of like a, you know, we're going to go for this kind of theme that's kind of like a little more darker that we're going to try and bring out with those you know like more harmonious kind of elements. Well, when we came about, like those sort of lyrics were. Uh... Uh, there was really no option like that was just kind of where my brain was at like so it wasn't like the sort of embracing of death as like a release was a common thought in my like mind at the time and uh you know if anything that was a like it was my like anti-suicide in the sense like the idea of death my own personal one like my own personal anti-suicide was the idea that death is always there as a release no matter how bad things get and in a perverse way it kind of became a like com comforting idea but I mean the first album was a very strong like like basically uh, ther like therapy session but the second album my life is in a vastly different place and 
uh, the lyrics that I wrote, like, Joe and I, like, split lyrics, but, uh, the, the themes that I'm dealing with on, on, on foundations are more concerned with, they are personal, but it's also just more, like, the direction of where, like, how I feel, like, the world is, you know. Hey, buddy, do you have any change? Sorry, man, I don't. I'm sorry, brother. That's an interview first, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, hang on. Okay, and then, uh... Part three of the interview that we didn't anticipate, but is happening right now. Um, so we were kind of talking on, you know, kind of the lyrics of Paul Beer, just kind of death being um, just kind of something you eventually kind of like embraced in a way, kind of as opposed to, to right. fearing. Yeah, and it's, I think that's, I don't know, for me it was like a sort of stopgap to sort of understanding different ways to, I mean, there was a lot of changes in my life that happened after the release of the first album that aren't even necessarily related to, you know, the fact that we've been touring not, almost nonstop since then. And, but like, there was just a lot, it was a really tumultuous period of life. And so, but now like, like lyrically, like the lyrics for all of our stuff comes after the music for the most part. And so the songs come about and then, after a certain period of time, I can figure out what the songs are about. And then that's, you know, the lyrics come from there. And I've never spent more than, like, three hours on, on lyrics. It's just kind of a... It's the same way as, like I was saying, the basis of the songs. There's not a lot of thought that goes into it. It just, like, when it happens, when you know it's the right time, like, that's when you, like... I'll really just sit down and focus. Like, if I'm knowing I'm having, like, a particular, like, moment of inspiration or something you know sit down and just like almost like stream of consciousness like write things so i mean the lyrics would be necessarily from album to album different because they're an honest reflection of wherever i'm at like mentally at the time sure. um well just to kind of start wrapping this interview up since our uh, hands and lips are starting to turn blue and purple <laughs> um any plans for you guys? Um, immediate, I know you only have this night, and I think tomorrow night is the last night of this tour, if yeah. I'm correct. Um, and then maybe a couple one-off shows here and there before the end of the year. But anything um, in, a, you know, in the new year that you guys have planned that you can announce or anything in the works that you can talk about? Um, I'm honestly not fully sure how. Like, uh, There's some rumors on like the Internet for some stuff that we're going to do. and uh, But we are definitely playing... Uh, we're playing a New Year's Eve show in, in Austin. Saw that with the sword? Yeah, it <laughs> should be sick. pretty fun. And then uh, we're playing a show in Little Rock in late February. And then after that, we're touring a bit in the spring, and then we're going to Europe again next summer probably. So more touring and so touring, more touring, touring yeah. I'm going to try to take a break by, like, next fall and try to, like, really, like, I don't know, figure out, like, what's, what's up with the, <laughs> the rest of my life, you know? Like... <laughs> hopefully try to like write some more music like we've got a bunch of stuff in the works but we've been so busy you can't really like sit down and just like sure. really put anything together right, right. so hopefully after like next summer we'll have a, a break not that i mean i love touring and everything right. but like you need to you yeah need to it's the yeah definitely so um well just to, to end off the interview we always kind of like to ask a more a more fun less serious question um 2014 like like all the recent years um have been very good for metal um have there been any particular releases since everyone is releasing their year-end lists that um you can say or speak for the band that paul bear has really been listening to and digging whether it's metal or not from um, this year yeah it, I I know when I ask that question, a lot of people you know say like, well, we've been touring and focusing so much on our own shit that it's like you know we don't have time to listen to other stuff. But that's, um, are are there any things for you guys that fit that? Uh, what you were saying is totally true in my like state. Like I don't like I haven't uh, kept up with things as much as I once did, just because when I had a place, I didn't have the internet and like pretty much would just be a hermit when I'm at, in Little Rock because it's the exact opposite of all other points in my life. So uh, I just read a lot and stuff back home and listen to my same records from that I've had, you know. So but uh, as far as things that came out this year, uh, obviously for me, like, 
my favorite release by far is the new Godflesh. Oh, really? Which we all we were all really into it, but like Godflesh is my really like top tier level band. Like that's my favorite heavy band ever, and the new album was so beyond like. I mean, I, I try not I try not to have expectations for stuff, especially things that are or just things that I'm really into. You know, like I don't want to be like let down, and everyone, you know, you got to give people like the benefit of the doubt that especially like musicians or artists or whatever you know that they have a particular vision you know you don't like whatever they do is what they're going to do but like i'm sure i would have enjoyed it regardless but i was like completely blown away and i like love the new god flesh and uh that horrendous album that came out dude you've got to check it out man it's really really good it's it's really brutal and also just like got crazy like melodies and stuff. It's just solid death metal all around, man. Cool. It's just good metal in general. Cool. Well, uh, that's been uh, the interview, everyone. Uh, this is, of course, has been another Brutalitopia interview. This time with Brett Campbell of uh, a Paul Bear. Be sure to check out Foundations of Burden and uh, catch them out somewhere on the road next year, since it sounds like they're going to be touring a lot. Um, so yeah, see you guys later. <laughs>